All right, guys. Now, case four, and I have to tell you, I'm I gave you a particularly hard and unusual set today because I'm trying to do uh, uh, use cases of things I've not made videos of yet, and the pickings are getting kind of slim. So a lot of the easier entities have been taken. So I'm really sorry. I'm showing you really cool stuff that's also really rare and difficult. Um, so you guys are being real troopers, but hopefully you'll enjoy this. This is a 40 year old man with a slow growing subcutaneous nodule on the forearm. And here we've got two slides. Here's one and two, and I'm gonna go and use this one to zoom in on at a higher power. Okay, what did you think about this? So it looks like we have a tumor down in the subcutis or mm -hmm. subcutaneous tissues. Um, it kind of looks vaguely nodular or lobular from low power Good. Um, with some pushing border. It doesn't really look very well circumscribed to me. Um, again, from low power, we can see there's kind of different zones of the tumor, like maybe in more myxoid areas, some inflammatory areas, and also some like more pink, maybe fibrous areas. Um, and then... What is this? Just out of curiosity, power, what's this structure right here? Do you recognize this? Is this like another fascia? It's area? fascia. Good. So it's really nice to get used to seeing fascia because um, it tells you right away sometimes when you don't have a full... Like here we got full thickness, right? We got skin, epidermis, dermis, subcutis fascia and then underlying skeletal muscle but you don't always get that sometimes you get a chunk of tumor taken out and if you recognize fascia dense regular bundles of connective tissue and i've got a whole video on that um called the called the ramen noodle sign because my fellow ed fulton said that that when you see dense regular collagen it gets real wavy so if it's ultra wavy it's probably actually collagen fibroblastic not neural um, so he said it's like ramen noodles in a package. This one's not perfect, but I love that. And I was like, oh, it's the ramen noodle sign of Ed Fulton. So in honor of my awesome former oh. fellow Ed, I called it that. And uh, yeah, recognizing this though, which is going to be fascia, tendon, ligament, um, uh, rectus sheath of the muscle, all of those things. It can tell you where you are, even if you don't have anything else for context. You can say, look, we're down at the fascia level. So it can be really useful um, in real life practice actually to recognize fascia. And I find that a lot of even practicing pathologists sometimes struggle to recognize dense regular connective tissue because it can kind of get confused with muscle or nerve or other things. All right, sorry, I didn't mean to sidetrack too much, but yeah, what do you think now um, going in closer? Yeah, so on higher power, again, we have like nice mixoid areas. And the tumor cells seem very pleomorphic. Yeah. There's a lot of hyperchromasia. Some of them have really crazy prominent giant nucleoli. Yeah, um, it's like as big as its neighbor. It's amazing. Yeah, and there's a really dense inflammatory component with a lot of eosinophils. I like all the things so, you're saying. Um, there's also a lot of cells that have like almost like spiral inclusion. <laughs> you know what it is. Good. So I was thinking this is like a mixo-inflammatory fibroblastic sarcoma. Excellent. Or a mixo fibrosarcoma. That is the main differential. Exactly. This is when I see... I'm in the subcutis and I see a lot of mixoid stuff and big ugly cells. The main things I'm going to think of right away, I'm going to think of mixofibrosarcoma. But once I start seeing a ton of inflammation and or big huge nucleoli, then the next thing I'm going to think of is mixoinflammatory fibroblastic sarcoma. And this is why people hate soft tissue pathology because we name things in very confusing and difficult ways. But um, this, this tumor used to have an even longer name, although it was pretty descriptive. It was described by a couple groups in the late 90s around the same time. And, um, and Dr. Weiss, my mentor, uh, her group, they called it inflammatory mixohyaline tumor of the distal extremities with Reed Sternberg and virocyte-like cells. Now, that name had to get changed because it's too long to fit into a tweet. I'm just joking. It actually does nowadays, but it takes up most of the words in a tweet. But I actually kind of like that name, even though we recognize now these are a form of sarcoma. Um, I like that because that name tells you all the features you're going to see. There are cells that look like Reed Sternberg cells, like right here. Look at that. It's like little two little owl eyes with big nucleoli, right? And then you see these big prominent uh, nucleoli that sometimes are so giant, they look like a CMV viral inclusion. I, I found one. Let me see if I can find it again. That's a pretty huge one right there. They're big, you know, very discreet, like CMV looking nucleoli. Like they really jump out at you. And then there's tons of inflammation and it can be neutrophils, EOs, uh, lymphs, plasma cells, a mixture of those. So when I see a lot of that, that's what I think. Now, if it's an old person on, and it's a, oh, there we go. There it was. Look at that guy. That's enormous. It's bigger than most of the other tumor cells. That's just so huge. It's awesome. So if you have a ton of mixoid change and the tumor's large, then I start thinking, well, this may be just mixofibrosarcoma, especially if it's an older person. These tend to arise on the hands 
or less likely the feet. But uh, more recent studies have shown that that's the classic finding is they're on the fingers or hand or, or on the feet. But um, now we know that they sometimes arise like on the more proximal extremities or maybe even rarely the trunk. So, um, and they tend to be kind of a few centimeters, kind of smaller in size. They often are real ugly without many mitoses, but sometimes they do have mites, even atypical ones. This one had scattered atypical mites. Look at that huge nucleus there. It's just, you can't look away. It's too amazing. If you don't like this, I don't know how to, how to help you. It's just too good. All right. These are uh, the, um, and there have been occasional times where I couldn't tell for sure. And I said, it's a, a pleomorphic sarcoma and the differential is mixofibrosarc and mixoinflammatory fibroblastic sarcoma. The treatment is gonna be managed more or less the same way, although there may be debate about whether or not to use radiation, but they're gonna to try to excise it with negative margins. The difference is in prognosis. The higher grade forms of mixofibrosarc can metastasize. This tumor, it's very rare to get metastases, but it tends to recur again and again and be locally aggressive because it's kind of infiltrative, just like mixofibrosarcoma, same issue there. It infiltrates at the edge along the fascia and it grows back again and again. And I have a whole long video about that topic that you can check out if you want. Um, and the, um, when these are on the finger or the hand, obviously it's going to be a problem. And, a, and, uh, you know, a fair number of times these patients end up with a partial, either a digit amputation or maybe worse, depending on the location because of the, uh, tendency for repeated local recurrence. Okay. But, um, when they're, uh, when they're in other sites, they may be able to get wider margins around them and have less of a chance of recurrence. So there've been debate over the years about what this tumor is and what molecular, some, some people think it's related to this rare entity called hemosiderotic fibrolipomatous tumor, but there's still kind of a debate and controversy. So don't, you don't really need to, I think, delve into that, but hopefully if you're watching this years in the future, hopefully it'll all be solved by then. There, some cases have been reported to have a TGF-BR3 or MGEA5, hard to remember those, um, gene um, rearrangements, but not all. And again, that goes back to, is it related to human sideroidic fibrolipomatous tumor or not? But um, more recently, um, they found that about a third of cases have BRAF mutations. So I've never used that. that I, I think the last time I saw one of these that I had trouble with, it was before that was described. But in a difficult case, you could try doing a BRAF a gene mutation to see um, if that's helpful to further confirm the diagnosis. So um, mixoinflammatory fibroblastic sarcoma, or MIFS for an abbreviation. And I think this is a very, very characteristic classic example um, of this lesion.